from Kansas State to the 18 Will Howard. What is up? Welcome into another edition of the KSO Show. Mason Voth here with you, flying solo on this uh, Wednesday before Thanksgiving. The full game preview for Iowa State with DYNI coming your way tomorrow on Thanksgiving. Thursday is when it will drop for everybody. So uh, gather the family around, say screw you to whatever NFL game is on at night because it that game always sucks. They always pick like an AFC North or like NFC South rivalry game. It's like, oh, God, these teams stink. Don't watch that. The only game worth watching on on Thursday is, is the Cowboys and Commanders, really only because it's the Cowboys. That's the, that's the one that I'll be locked into. Although I do enjoy a good Lions game on Thanksgiving. Maybe not as much now that they're a, a good football team. But the full preview coming on Thursday, and if you don't want to watch it with your family then, tell them to hang around, watch it on Friday instead of watching – well, I was going to say instead of watching Nebraska, but actually do watch Nebraska on Friday because it will be comical to watch them lose like four to two against Iowa and fail to reach bowl eligibility when they were sitting at five and three at one point this season. So I've already pissed off a lot of people uh, not in the K-State fan base, I'm sure, to start this. So like, let's throw one more out there. Shout out to the Jayhawks. Still haven't beaten K-State in 15 years in football. It's a pretty impressive streak the Cats got going. And uh Fortunately for K-State, it's given them the opportunity to win their ninth game of the season this Saturday against Iowa State. Chris Kleiman spoke to the media on Tuesday, as he does each and every week. to kind of give his thoughts on what's going on with K-State right now, looking ahead to some of the opportunities that are coming up uh, for K-State this weekend against Iowa State and then long term. And uh, one of the main topics of conversation for K-State uh, heading into this week, obviously, Senior Day is Saturday, so that's been a big thing that Chris Kleiman talked about. One thing that wasn't mm, impactful enough to need to throw up what Chris Kleiman said audio-wise, but he did mention that there won't be any knowledge to him, essentially, on what guys that have the COVID year that could return next year, when and how they might use it. Um, he said that that's a conversation that will have to happen once the regular season ends, so that either will come next week or if they're playing in the Big 12 title game, it will come a week after that. So that's not something that uh, there's any knowledge about at this point in time. And I, I know that some people are probably thinking about that, especially since there are some big names on that uh, list of seniors that could possibly come back next year. And there's some intrigue with how all of that will play out. But let's just start in the most important spot for Chris Kleiman. He talked about the win over KU. The way he feels about it, very similar to the way that I feel about K-State's win over the Jayhawks. It was pretty important in the grand scheme of things for this season. We all know that from the standpoint of everybody wants K-State to beat KU. It's important to get that win for the fans, for a lot of other reasons. But Chris Kleiman explained why he thought the win was so meaningful. We needed, we needed that signature win like we had last week. I thought that was important for this team because our wins have all become on blowouts, which is kind of crazy to think about when you've won as many games as we have and they've all been blowouts in the wins and the losses have all been on the last play or the last drive. So I thought it was really important for this team and their legacy to have one of those wins where um, didn't look good, found a way to come from behind and then held the lead, kept – you hang on to the ball for the last five minutes and 33 seconds with the offense on the field when they know what you're going to do. That's pretty impactful. That's pretty cool as far as a legacy. And, you know, the story's still being written for us. We still got more chapters, and this is a huge one. So um, we're still kind of figuring out what that final legacy is going to be. But uh, that was a huge chapter last week. And I'm 100% with Chris Kleiman on this one. I, K State needed that given the track record of other games this season. All their close games this year, they had come out losers, whether they deserved so or not. And they were fortunately able to get over the hump. And I've said it in a lot of different places, but it was the perfect uh, opportunity to redeem themselves for what had become a shortcoming throughout the season, where the Missouri game, the Oklahoma State game, the Texas game, all three of those, the defense had their struggles at various points in those games, but they locked in enough to give the offense the opportunity to win those games. And the offense just, they didn't go out and take it. They didn't do that. And in the game against KU, the defense was very, 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 very bad to start. I mean, KU was doing whatever they wanted with the Wildcat, whether it was Torrey Lachlan or Devin Neal or whoever they wanted to put in the backfield in the quarterback spot other than Cole Ballard. 
they were able to do anything and everything against the K-State defense. They struggled with it. Now, a lot of that has to do with the fact that, you know, you, you were without two of your Im- impactful linebackers that can help guide the defense and Daniel Green and Jake Clifton because they're done for the season with injuries. But uh, K-State had to get it figured out. They did. Big-time deal what K-State was able to overcome and do and what it meant for the season. So I'm with Chris Kleiman. I think it's a symbolic win for K-State, and it's one that shows that, you know, this team isn't what people wanted to call them, and it it's sports, it's football. Sometimes the luck doesn't go your way. And look at TCU last season. I mean, TCU won a lot of close ball games, and they got some very fortuitous bounces or happenings in those games along the way. And if a couple of those go wrong, similar to K-State season, then they're having a very similar year to what K-State is having this year. And I truly believe that. I mean, it, we're going to look back at this, and I think at the end of the season, it's really going to hurt for K-State to think about the opportunities that were missed because they very easily – could have won all the games that they lost this season. I mean, the opportunity was there. And in some of those games, you look back and say, man, K-State's the better team. We for, we for certain think that that's the case against Oklahoma State right now. But that's just the way it works out. So Chris Kleiman uh, on the same page with how I thought about that. Now, the flip side of getting that big win against KU, obviously it's emotional for the rivalry. Guys on this team really hadn't ever been in that position. Well, a lot of guys that have played at K-State in the last 15 years have not been in the position to play close games against KU. K-State being down 11 points, that is the most points that they have trailed in a in a game against KU since 2008 when Ron Prince was the head coach. So during this 15-year win streak, the most points I think K-State had been down was seven. I think they trailed by seven multiple times in the 2012 game in Manhattan against KU, and that was the biggest deficit that they had faced. K-State overcame 11 points. It's a big emotional win. You made sure that you didn't have that stink of losing to KU on your career resume. That's a big deal to a lot of these guys. When you get a streak starting to build up, you don't want to be the guys that let it fall. And this group didn't. But now you have to bounce back and beat Iowa State. Big emotional win last week. Could be one coming this week. How does K-State handle it? Chris Kleiman uh, talked about how the Wildcats prepare for bouncing back. You know, that's kind of been the story of our whole season. You know, you know whether it's following up a big win to a tough loss to whatever it may be, you know, like we talked in the locker room after the game. Uh, now it's our senior day, and it's it's our chance to honor our seniors, and uh, it's going to be emotional. Uh, I know the guys are going to be fired up and ready to play. I know Iowa State's going to be fired up and ready to play. It's a great rivalry. It's a great game. And so um, now it's the same thing we talk about every week, one day at a time, keep attacking the prep, and give ourselves a chance to be successful on Saturday. So there, there you have it from Chris Kleiman on that. They have bounced back a lot this season. And these spots where questions kind of start to fly, you're wondering what's going to go on, how's it going to go down, they've done a really good job about all of it. I mean, you, you think back to the loss to Missouri, they came back the next week. They, they, you know, they had some struggles in the game against UCF, but they led by 20 points in the final minute of that game. It only ends up being a 13-point game when UCF scores in garbage time at the end. Then. They have the bye week. They play Oklahoma State. Major disappointing loss in that one. Uh, They had the chance. They had the ball at the end of the game with a chance to go and tie it. They couldn't do it. They go on the road. They beat Texas Tech by 17, and that's when Texas Tech, it seemed like, was starting to turn things around, get things figured out. You had to do it in a little bit of a different way. Avery Johnson came in, took over. A lot of questions swirling at the time. Man, what's what's this going to mean for the rest of the season? And it turned out just to be uh, a way to get to this point in the year. You know, Avery Johnson didn't end up taking over the starting quarterback job like some people would have thought or wanted at that point in time. But it gave the opportunity for K-State to continue this season in a positive manner. Because if K-State loses that game to Texas Tech, they're 1-2 and in Big 12 play, they're 3-3, three and three, and you're coming home for two home games. But you hadn't been at home in over a month. And it just, it would have felt really bleak going into that point. K-State got a big time win. They started to play better against TCU in Houston. And they had every opportunity in the world to beat Texas, who, you know, is going to fight to scratch and claw into the the college football playoff picture. And then you kill Baylor and KU, you overcome adversity and you have an awesome season on the horizon. But they have bounced back in these losses. After losses this year, K-State has gone out and outscored their opponent 
by what ends up totaling to 64 points. So K-State has handled it well when it's been after a loss, but it's a lot easier, I think, to focus after a a tough loss than it is a big-time win because there is still that high. You can refocus when you're at a pretty pretty low point. There's really nothing else you can do. If you're if you're down here, the only thing you can do is get up to here. But if you're up here, it's a lot tougher to maintain at that level because you're going to just naturally start to come down at various points. K State has to try and do it after a big win this year because they really haven't had any of those wins this year that felt like they were big, emotional, and just oh man, this is awesome. This was big time. Really haven't had that. It's it's been an easy easy schedule in terms of the games that you've won. So important to see how K-State comes back this week. I have full confidence they can do it. They've done a nice job of this in Chris Kleiman's career of being able to follow up big time wins on the back end of it. You think back to last season, obviously they did it after they beat KU last year and they went and, and beat TCU in the big 12 title game. After they beat Oklahoma and Norman last year, they came home beat Texas Tech. You even go back to Chris Kleiman's first year, 2019. They beat Oklahoma in that big-time game in Manhattan, and they turn around and they go take care of business in Lawrence in a game that it was getting hyped up again. You know, All those KU people were fired up in 2019 because supposedly Les Miles was going to save everything in Lawrence, and K-State shut them up. I think it was like 38-3 to at one point in that game, 35-3, to something. K-State was kicking their tail. It was a a big-time moment there. K-State has done a nice job of bouncing back after big-time wins under Chris Kleiman, so I have no reason to uh, try and think that that won't happen here. One person that was big in the win against KU was Jace Brown, just shy of 100 receiving yards. He's now the third leading receiver on K-State's team, despite the fact that he really didn't become a a focal point of the offense until the Texas Tech game when Avery Johnson was at quarterback. Then the connection continued when Will Howard uh, had fully regained the job back. Here's what Chris Kleiman had to say on the freshman wide receiver who's turned into a playmaker for the Wildcats. Impactful, that's for sure. Um, and um, just keep keep practicing, keep doing what you're doing, uh, and when your opportunity comes, make the most of it. And uh, you know, early in the early, early in the season, he wasn't a part of the rotation, but he kept doing things at practice. And when when I say doing things at practice, when we'd go K State versus K State, he's running by really good players, and we was like, "God, this kid's got really special speed. We think he can do some things." And we start throwing him on some go balls and stuff, and then realizing he can be an every down wide receiver for us. And uh, he's made some really big plays last week. The third and eight, where he kind of ran a, a jerk route or a return route um, uh, on a big play and caught it and ran away from the guys. That was huge, as well as the first play of the game. We thought we had a touchdown um, because we we knew what the coverage was, and uh, we'll put a good ball to him, and, and we get a forty yard gain or something on first down. Um, those are plays that um, um, you know we're so thankful to have him because he's got that extra gear, and uh, he's had a really good freshman season. It's been a good good year for Jace Brown. There's no doubt about that. It's been impactful. He's been a major help to what K-State's done. And you do start to wonder where the offense would be if Jace Brown hadn't really start to break out like he has this season because K-State was looking for answers. And as much as I think Phillip Brooks has played some of his best football uh, in his career over the last six, seven weeks of the of the season, you needed somebody that could be a little bit more of a playmaker for you. And you look at what Jace Brown has done. He's given K-State – some big time moments in games. I mean, he had he had a great catch against Texas Tech, and then he had 88 yards on four catches against TCU. He had four catches for 77 yards and a score against Texas, and then he opens up the game with a massive 46 yard catch, first play of the game against KU to set the tone, set up a touchdown drive, and then at the end on a big third down, he's able to scoot for over 20 yards, pick it up for K State, keep a drive alive. Jace Brown's been really big for K-State this year, and uh, you're always looking at K-State for wide receivers to get people excited to think of what they're going to be able to do for you, and very excitedly, Jason Brown has done that, and now he's going to be the guy going into next season that everybody is is fired up about and looking forward to kind of seeing what he can do, and I would also you know, throw into the equation here with how everything has, has kind of started to, to unfold and go. Um, you know, we're starting to get more from Keegan Johnson over the last couple of weeks. You know, 
In the last three games for K-State, Keegan Johnson's caught 12 balls for 118 yards and two touchdowns. Starting to find ways to get to him. You're going to hope next year if you're K-State that there is going to be health for him, and now you get to see what's going. But this receiver group is moving in a in a good direction. Opportunities are coming. Things are starting to look better for them, and that sets up nicely for next year, and obviously you'll want that because the expectation would be that it's going to be Avery Johnson, and you're going to have a young guy back there at quarterback that he's going to need somebody other than just his legs to make plays. So uh, look forward to all that moving forward. All right. Now, the next thing that we'll uh, kind of dive into here is I don't know if anybody's looked at the weather forecast for Manhattan on Saturday, but it's it's gotten a little, little dicey at times. Uh, it's changed a handful. It's not supposed to be as cold as originally predicted. I think at one point, Drew was telling me Saturday night that man, it was looking like it was going to be 28 degrees. Uh, high is 37 now, but it'll probably be really chilly when kickoff comes and the lights are down at 7 o'clock. There is a chance of snow, 80% chance during the day and night in Manhattan, one to three inches of snow expected Saturday night, and that is something that K-State has to be ready for. Chris Kleiman says that the Wildcats are indeed prepared for the weather. Um, You always look at it. Uh, Offense will do some wet ball things um, each day this week. Uh, By the time we practice right now, it's dark anyway. So it's already a little coolness in the air. It's going to be windier today. So we get acclimated. I mean, we use, we're use we at the indoor, but both groups go outside. We don't stay in the indoor. Offense goes outside for a little bit, then defense. So we, we get acclimated. We've done that this whole year, even the, the Houston week where it was, it was in the 30s as well. We were in and out. And so, um, you know, our, our guys are, are used to it. And, um, but we've got to do some things with wet balls for sure. So we'll see how it looks. So that, that could obviously impact how the game ends up playing out and how it looks for K-State and Iowa State. Uh, it's a fun wrinkle, I guess. You know, if it's, if it's going to be cold, it might as well snow. Give you something fun to look at, have that kind of awesome football weather experience. Don't let it just be cold and windy. Those games suck. I mean, Iowa State, what year would that have been? Uh, would that have been, the, I guess, maybe the 2019 game against Iowa State was like that, last game of the year. Uh, in Manhattan, same type of deal. Uh, last year was a little rainy for for KU. The 2015 Iowa State game, that was, I think, an 11 a.m. kick. I can remember that one being cold and the wind just whipping through you, it, but it was sunny. Like, that's not fun. At least let there be snow. Have a little bit of a, a good time with it. I don't think that it'll impact K-State too greatly. We know that they can run the football well. That's always paramount in weather situations like this. DJ Giddens just had an awesome game against Kansas. Trayshawn Ward broke through. I'm not worried about the weather for K-State this weekend, unless it's just so miserable that it's going to prevent anything from being established for you, but I'm not banking on that right now. The final thing that Chris Kleiman spoke about that uh, is impactful to note is Senior Day coming up this Saturday in Manhattan. Here is what Chris Kleiman had to say on this senior class that if you think about it, they went through a lot. These guys were freshmen during the, the 2020 COVID season. Uh, here's what Chris Kleiman made of this class. Well, it's fun for me because I've been with a lot of them all five years that I've been here. Um, some of them came back for a six-year, which uh, I, I'm so thankful to spend another uh, year with those guys. And um, they've been through so many of those guys, those offensive linemen especially, uh, have been through so much. Um with uh, our staff, um, you know, I don't even know how many guys are walking, and there's a lot of guys that are walking that have to make a decision once they're done if they're going to come back for another year. But there's a, a number of guys that, that we know are going to move on that uh, you know, went through uh, a good time in 2019 to a, a tough experience in the pandemic year to rebuilding this the way we want it to in 21, 22, and now 23 to put three really good seasons back to back. And I told the guys um, on Monday, the guys that have been here with us all this time, that you've really, these guys have put K-State on the national map. And I think that's, it's really cool for a legacy for that group. Um, No matter how this thing ends, as far as if we finish this week in the regular season, if we get the opportunity to play for another week in the Big 12 championship, to play in a bowl game, whatever it may be, um, be proud of the legacy because you left the place a lot better 
um, after your time here. Great way to end things uh, with words from Chris Kleiman on the senior class. It's always fun to see the senior day festivities. K-State handled it very well uh, since Chris Kleiman has been around, and uh, I think things will go very smoothly for the Wildcats again this weekend against Iowa State. Seven o'clock kick, boy. Uh, all these night games this season just couldn't avoid, and that's going to end up being, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, seven night games this season. Uh, that's, that's, that's tough on the, on the, the sleep schedule and the travel, uh, situation for me, but Hey, it's been fun getting to see the cats under the lights, good environments and all those games and an opportunity one last time for something big to play out. So that will do it for this quick edition of the KSO show today. DY is back with me. Uh, tomorrow on Thanksgiving, we will have the full game preview against Iowa state. Also, one good thing to note that if you enjoy the KSO show uh, and you only watch what we have on the YouTube, now's the perfect time to go get signed up over on On3. You can get two months for just $1 when you use the code KSU1 at sign up. This is an offer just for the people that watch the show on YouTube and listen to the podcast, so nobody else is getting this. This is only for you guys. So if you watch and you are not a subscriber already, getting all the great inside info on the message board and all the great analysis from Drew, DY, and Fan, perfect time to do it. Two months, $1, the code KSU1 when you sign up over on On3. One other thing to note here, K-State ranked number 19 in the latest college football playoff rankings that have come out. Uh, this stat comes courtesy of the great Cole Manbeck from Three Ma. Uh, also, something that I should plug here: go listen to John Kurtz, Cole Manbeck, and our very own Derek Young on the Three Ma po podcast. K State has been ranked in every college football playoff poll over the last two seasons. Now there are only nine other teams that have joined K State in doing so. That would be Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, Alabama, LSU, Penn State, Oregon, Tennessee, and Tulane. So. Good company there for the Wildcats and everything else going on. So that will do it for me. I'm Mason Voth. Thank you for watching the KSO Show. We are back full show tomorrow previewing the Cats and the Clones. Also, don't forget, we'll have plenty of coverage Wednesday night for K-State basketball at home against Central Arkansas, 7 p.m. tip from Bramlage Coliseum.